What's up guys, Sleepy Moddy here back with another video. Now just over two years ago I released a video about Windows 7 vs 8 versus Windows 10 when it comes to gaming and game related tasks and I found mixed results. Now looking back I do see that there were many reasons to actually finding my well weird mixed results mainly due to lack of driver optimizations, new code and the fact that Windows 10 was still relatively new at the time. But here in 2017 we've had a number of years for Windows to get their act together not like it's really helped, but now we're taking a look at it once again to see really is there much of a difference between Windows 7, 8 or 8.1 and also to Windows 10 for video games. So let's go ahead and just jump straight in. Now in terms of the actual system that we use, that's also too pretty important. For today's system we included a GTX 1080 Ti video card, an i7-7700K, yes it's not exactly the latest generation but still is a very powerful CPU nevertheless, and also to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and a Samsung 960 Pro NVMe based SSD. Basically we chose this SSD and RAM combination because we didn't want any bottleneck from our storage or caching abilities. So full RAM, full SSD, we are ready to go here. Now also too, as a quick note, this system is also to not overclock, so all the stock clocks are applied just so we get some consistency and ease of well stability because sometimes things may be getting a little bit unstable. But with that being said, let's jump it into some synthetics to see what the system's doing. And synthetics are a great way to get an idea of a theoretical system's performance. And taking a look at them, we see some interesting numbers. Boot times with Boot Racer was a very interesting results seeing Windows 10 actually being the slowest despite having an NVMe SSD at its disposal and also to Microsoft themselves claiming how awesome and fast Windows 10 is it was interesting to see that well other operating systems actually beat it out. It was also too interesting to see Windows 10 being the slowest and also too was interesting to see Windows 8.1 winning out here. The rest of the synthetics also too pulled out some interesting numbers seeing each operating system actually winning and losing out in some results so when it comes to synthetics, each operating system seems to have its strength but also to its weakness. And this is also too reflected in things like handbrake and more synthetic tests that aren't exactly testing the operating system rather an actual task and we see that Windows 10 will win and then lose in some cases and the conclusion that we can sort of draw from this again is that some tests are better suited to some operating systems and some are better suited to others. It may be a system configuration or it might just be a software configuration but at the end of the day when you can't average out all the wins and losses it seems to see that basically all the operating systems seem to come up roughly all the same. But we don't care about synthetics, we're here to see the gaming numbers. So I fired up a bunch of games on the systems and let's take a look at what we're getting. I set all the games to maximum settings making sure that they were the same and also to making sure that we had DirectX 10 mode enabled and not running in any other mode. Now I'll touch on why DirectX 10 is important in just a moment but for the meantime let's take a look at our numbers numbers. And would you look at that, most if not all the game resulted in similar numbers here, with the only real major differences between each numbers is most likely the actual game itself, where I can't exactly get exactly the same numbers bang on each time, where we might see a 1 to 2 FPS difference, it is most likely again just coming back to the actual uh, performance of the game itself rather than the systems being tested. So whether it be Windows 10, 8.1 or 7, we found exactly the same numbers on all of these systems. However, one thing that these graphs don't exactly show is the stability of the system. And I have to say, for some reason on my Windows 10, I had two games actually crash for no apparent reason. Not exactly sure, but once they crashed once, they were perfectly fine for the rest of the tests. So Windows 10 still has that little bit of instability there, whereas Windows 8.1 and 7 both were absolutely solid. But on the game front, I have to say there was little difference here with the clean operating system install and a clean image of the system. Now I did mention clean operating systems and clean installs, and that is rather important. If you were to go ahead and benchmark your system right now, for example on Windows 8.1 or Windows 7, and and then go ahead and do a fresh install of Windows 10 and run the exact same benchmarks, you'll find most likely a higher set of FPS on Windows 10, making Windows 10 look like the better option. However, with that being said, you do need to keep in mind if you are doing a fresh install, you're basically wiping out all those background tasks. So your Windows 7 install or 8.1 install may have had a ton of background processes and weird applications running that could be decreasing your FPS. And again, if you do a fresh install to Windows 10, you're basically wiping out all those background tasks, making Windows 10 look a whole 
all lot better than what it may actually be. So it's important for these tests and also too for your tests as well, that you test it all on a fair playing field. If you've got a clean install of Windows, make sure it's clean across the board and you should see a lot more similar numbers. But at this point, Windows 10, 8.1 and even 7 all look to be forming about the same. Why on earth would we even consider Windows 10 for gaming? Well, there are a couple of reasons. Number one being DirectX 12. Whilst there isn't exactly a ton of games at the moment supporting DirectX 12, it is slowly being adopted by developers and I definitely have to say in the future DirectX 12 will be the way to go most likely unless something else does come up in the next couple of years that will obviously replace it. And also do the Windows Store with Xbox integration. If you want to go ahead and play some Windows only kind of titles that are only found on the Windows Store and not on Steam or similar platforms, you're going to have to go with Windows 10. Whilst there's not exactly a ton of titles at the moment that are exclusive to the Windows Store, there are still a couple out there and if you are a diehard fan of these games, you're going to just have to run Windows 10 and basically deal with it there. Not to mention DirectX 12 is only available on Windows 10 and at this point in time there is no talk of at all moving it to any other platform. So if you want DirectX 12 or you want to go ahead and play games out of the Windows Store, it kind of looks like you'll be stuck with Windows 10. Then finally, also too, if you want to play some Xbox kind of stuff on your PC, you'll also too need Windows 10 thanks to the fact that it has that Xbox integration built into its Windows 10 support. Speaking of support though, another thing to keep in mind is Bolt support. While Windows 8.1 and Windows 7 both perform about the same when it comes to games, security updates, patches and fixes will also too be seeing a lot less of them on the Windows 8.1 and Windows 7 platform meaning if you're building a computer today to be playing games for quite a bit of time, you may be running into the issue where the Windows 8.1 install or Windows 7 install may not be able to compete with that Windows 10 option. With Windows 7 losing support in January of 2020 and Windows 8.1 losing support in January 2023, these operating systems only have a few years left in their lifespan before we do run out of time, being here in late 2017. There's only a couple years left, which is still sounding like quite a lot, but if you actually think about it and think how long some people run Windows 7 and 8.1, you kind of really want to see much longer lifespan than just these options. And with the current version that we tested here today of Windows 10 being supported through to October 2025, with various updates in between that time going ahead and extending that lifespan way beyond 2025, and Microsoft claiming that this is the last version of Windows, Windows 10 definitely looks to be seeing a lot better support when it comes to keeping things up to date and running smoothly. So support is definitely one thing you'll want to keep in mind. But at the end of the day, if we're strictly looking at gaming numbers that we found here today for just gaming and not factoring anything else like support, hardware configuration, background tasks or first party titles, we see little to no differences and there's not really that much of value in changing your operating system if you're already on one. When we tested our games and the setups were exactly the same, again, performance numbers were really, really similar. Unless you need something like Xbox integration, DirectX 12, then Windows 7 and 8.1 are still just as good. Even the synthetics had each operating system have its wins and also two losses. And since the free upgrade to Windows 10 is no longer available and the free loophole upgrade is also to closing, if you're on Windows 7 or Windows 8.1 and don't need that Windows 10, there is little point in actually going through the effort of upgrading your system. Unless you do want, again, the first party stuff or you're trying to do something weird like 4k HDR Netflix kind of stuff which has Windows 10 as a requirement or really anything else that has Windows 10 as a requirement. Sure you do get the latest technologies and some more updates but for a few less dollars you can jump on Windows 8.1 or Windows 7, have a lot less of the drawbacks that come with Windows 10 and have a fairly decent gaming experience. But again there are a few drawbacks with everything that we do look at here. Sure Windows 10 is more an advanced operating system but again if you're happy with Windows 8.1 or Windows 7 and playing your video games there, there's really not that much of a difference. But let me know what operating system you run down in that comments section. Are you a Windows 7 fan, Windows 8.1 fan like I am, or are you on to Windows 10? Do let me know down in that comments section. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.